the secant method. What you will see is that the secant method is essentially the newton raphson method when we don't have analytical expression. So it's completely a numerical algorithm. So it works great when that function isn't really a function, but a simulation or some other kind of really involved calculation that's not a closed form expression. So we'll go ahead and illustrate the method, have some notes on the implementation, and then give an example. Description of the method. So we start with a function. This is the same function that we use for the newton raphson method, and it has a root, and we want to find it. One difference now between this and the newton raphson method, with the newton raphson method, we only needed one guess. Here, we need two guesses, and that's because we're going to have to somehow numerically determine the slope, and we need two points to connect those with a line to estimate the slope. So we have to make two guesses as close to the root as we can find, and it doesn't matter if they're both on one side or they cross it. We just need two points as close to the root as we can get, and they can't be the same point. They can't be equal. We'll then evaluate the function at those two points. Given that information, we have two points, we can calculate a line and figure out where that line passes through the x-axis. So the equation of the line is y minus the y value of some point along that line equals m, the slope, times x minus the x value of some point on the line that matches this y value. So here's the equation for a line, it needs a slope, and it needs one point, x and y. So what is the slope? Well, slope is rise over run. So the rise, we're going from F2 to F1. So we'll put in F2 minus F1. And then the run, we're going from X2 to X1, or X1 to X2. So the run is X2 minus X1. And so that's our slope. Which point do we use? Well, I'm putting in the second point here because what we're going to do is keep calculating new points and eliminating that first one as we go. So I'm plugging in the second point here. And instead of y, we have the function. So we have the function being evaluated at x. Instead of y2, we have the function evaluated at x2. Our slope, we just calculated f2 minus f1 over x2 minus x1. And then we just have x minus x2. So that's the equation of this line. And next, we need to figure out where that crosses the x-axis. So this is the equation we have from the previous slide. To figure out where that crosses the x-axis, we will set our function equal to 0. And we will solve for this x sub r. When we do that, this is what we get. So this is the equation that we're using to calculate the next estimate for the root. So we'll evaluate the function at this new root. And at that point, we can discard that first point and then rename our point. So this new root that we calculated becomes our new x2, and our new x1 is the old x2. Now, an important thing here is that we're copying this information over. We don't want to reevaluate these functions. We already know them. We're just copying information over. And a good mentality to put yourself in is that every time you call that function, for every value of x, it takes one week to calculate. So it becomes very important to copy information over that we already have rather than recalculate it. So we're kind of back to the beginning. We have two guesses and two function values, and we're going to repeat the process. We will calculate the position of the next point by essentially constructing the line that passes through these two points and figuring out where that passes the x-axis. So we have this equation we derived for calculating where that next root is. We'll evaluate the function at that new root. And then we'll adjust what is the first and second point by copying information over, not reevaluating functions. And so on, we connect that with a line, we'll calculate our next point, and we keep doing this on and on and on. Notes on implementation. Let's work through a block diagram of the algorithm. 
So before we even go into the algorithm, we have to come up with two initial guesses that are hopefully as close to the root as possible, and they don't all have to be on one side of it. They can span it or all be on one side. Just x1 cannot equal x2, and we'd like to get that as close to the root as possible. At this point, we enter our algorithm. And the first thing we'll do is evaluate the function at our first point. Given that, we can enter our main loop. And the first step in the main loop is to evaluate the function at the second point. Now what we'll do is we'll calculate a delta x. This is how much we're going to move our second point to get our third guess at the root. So we calculate this delta x. At that point, our old point one, we're going to discard and replace it with our old point two. Then we will adjust point two, and that's x2 minus delta x. Now we'll check the tolerance. We'll go back to this delta x we calculated. We'll look at the absolute value of it and see if that's smaller than some tolerance that we've defined. If it is not smaller than that tolerance, in other words, the step from iteration to iteration is still pretty large, we'll keep going and refining our root. If it does fall below that tolerance, we'll say that we're finished. And that's it, that is the secant method. Let's go over some notes or comments about the secant method. First, it's an open method like the newton raphson method. It does not require bounds. We don't need this lower and upper bound. We need just two initial guesses. The newton raphson method only needed one. Here we need two because this is a fully numerical method. Because it's fully numerical, we don't need analytical expressions for the function or its derivative. So this works great if that function is in some kind of closed form analytical function, but maybe the result of a simulation or some other sort of complicated involved calculation where there's not really a closed form equation involved. I like to think of this as a fully numerical version of the newton raphsons method. But because of that, it has some of the same weaknesses that we looked at with the newton raphsons method. One is it's vulnerable to instability and it cannot converge at all. It can oscillate and go unstable or very slow convergence. It can jump to another route, find a completely wrong route. And so it has all the same weaknesses of the newton raphsons method. Let's do an example. This is the same example we did for the newton raphson method, so we can compare them. So we have our function sine x, and we would like to find the root of f of x in the proximity of four. So that's the definition of the problem. Yes, we have a closed form expression, so I really would solve this with the newton raphson method, but let's use this and exercise the secant method. So the first thing is we need two good initial guesses. So let's just pick two numbers close to four. So I pick four and 3.9. Now over here in MATLAB, so we always have this dashboard where we have all of our hard coded stuff. We're defining the problem. And I'm using in MATLAB what's called an anonymous function. I'm defining func as at sine. And so now in my code, anytime I call func, it's really the sine function. And I do this simply so I can change what the function is and I don't have to retype the rest of my code. It automatically works. So I'll define x1 and x2 and define my tolerance, 10 to the minus six. So I'm clearly looking for an answer that has uh, down, it's accurate down to the four or five decimals. So the first thing we'll do is evaluate the function at the first point. And so that's what happens here. We're calling func, which in this case, acts just like the sine. And so we're calculating sine of x1 to get f1. Now we're going to enter the main loop. And so at first I set my delta, my change in my x values to infinity because I'm looking at my step sizes and as long as they're greater than some tolerance, I'm gonna to keep doing something. And so I set it to infinity so it goes into the loop at first. First thing in my loop is to evaluate the function at the second point. So I call func of x2 and I calculate f2. Now we'll calculate how much we'll need to change x2 to go to the next iteration, that is delta x. 
And so delta x is x2 minus x1 times f2 divided by f2 minus f1. And that's just typing in what's over here. At this point, we'll make the new first point the old second point. So we're taking information from the old second point over to the first point, and we're not reevaluating the function. We're not calling func again. Remember, keep in mind that this could take a week to calculate for every value of x. So we want to copy information over whenever possible and not reevaluate that function. And then the last thing is we change our x2. So our new value of x2 will be the old value minus this change dx, which was recalculated up here. And then we'll be checked in our while loop to see if we've converged. And so if it's converged, when dx becomes small enough, uh, this, this is not satisfied and we come out of our while loop and the algorithm's done and we found our root. This converged after five iterations. So it cost us an extra iteration and that's the price we pay for the fully numerical algorithm. So we could expect this if we were to run this against newton raphson to maybe take an extra few iterations because it's fully numerical, but otherwise it will behave very similar. But really we're using the secant method when we don't have an analytical expression. From the bottom of my heart, thank you very much for watching this video. I love hearing your stories about how these videos helped you. I also love answering your questions. So please tell me your stories and ask your questions in the comment section. I promise I will try to answer every single question that's asked. If you like this video, hit the like and subscribe button. I also recommend visiting the official course website that has links to the latest versions of the notes, the latest videos, and there's lots of other resources to help you learn, including implementations in MATLAB. I'll see you in the next video.